Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my bi-weekly review for this week's episode of the Walking Dead comic book series. This week we got the release of the Walking Dead issue 139 from the edge of the world. Okay, and spoiler warning, if you guys have not read this issue yet, you want to go ahead and read it before you watch this review. Um, so, I didn't get my review post on Wednesday. Apologies for that, guys. Uh, I simply forgot. Like, I I was used to it being released once a month, and then they just, you know, they released it. So, people that you know, messaged me, they're like, where's your review for 139? I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, 139. Right, right, right. So, <laughs> all the excitement of the finale of Season 5, of course, kind of distracted me. So, that said, here it is for you guys. My apologies. And, uh, you know, spoiler warning, of course. Um, so... Pretty good issue. This was basically an issue that kind of filled in some gaps for a lot of readers, for a lot of uh, people who love The Walking Dead that have been following the comic book series and uh, were wondering, and a lot of people were, what the fate of Michonne and Ezekiel were. And a lot of us had assumed that they had just uh, basically ended up together, and after a couple years, uh, they would still be together at the uh, community known as the Kingdom, uh, which is what they what, what they call their their community for any new viewers. Um, so we have the two-year time skip, of course. A lot of things change. A lot of things happen. You've got Maggie. She's the leader of the Hilltop. You've got Rick, still leader of Alexandria. You've got Ezekiel and Michonne, who were the leaders of the, uh, the kingdom. And then, of course, we found out in this issue, too, that Dwight is still around as well, too, and we're to assume that he is the leader of the uh, Saviors, um, who it looks like uh, have uh, you know set up uh, as part of their trade um, lumber. So you have each different little community that kind of does its own thing and kind of produces what it does. And then you have them kind of sharing in a trade system set up between them so they can all get what they uh, what they need, what they want. You've got Rick and Alexandria. They are creating bullets. They're casting bullets for everybody and they're making more than they can even use to fire off, which is really cool to see because with that, they've effectively uh, defeated the zombie apocalypse, I would, I, would, I would have to say. that That's probably the most crucial thing. If you can cast bullets and you know you have enough guns to actually use them and, and consistently can keep casting them you can take on a full-on herd with a proper you know gate type system even alexandria has if you had enough ammunition you could just sit there all day and just lay out zombie bodies and it wouldn't be a problem uh which it seems like they can basically do now at this point then you have the concern of food of course and we find out in this one that michonne is basically a, a lead fisherman or leader of a, of a ship and they go out and they you know they catch fish and, and they do that and they bring they bring huge hauls back of, of tons of fish. Um, the uh, the hilltop, I believe, is still you know growing food, although I haven't seen that specifically stated, but I'm pretty sure their their contribution is food, and then we find out the saviors are producing uh, lumber so they can you know build things. So they can build houses, build uh, you know barricades, build whatever they want to to build in between the communities. Um, possibly some kind of uh, connecting railway pretty soon. So that's pretty good as well. So um, that's part of the issue. There, there was that, of course, with Michonne. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then you had the part with uh, Carl. Just a quick little thing with Carl. Megan, the others found out Carl's gone. They've searched for him. They realize he's not there. And, it, you know, she realizes that he must have gone after Lydia. So we're assuming that Maggie's going to have to go after Carl because, uh, you know, it's, it's Rick's son. He's going to be furious if Carl goes missing. And, of course, at the same time... Um, you know, this group, the Whispers, they, they, they can't exactly trust him at this time. They don't know what they're about. And it seems like they're being actually pretty uh, hospitable with him. <laughs> uh, although they're not really at their home, but the Whispers don't really, they don't seem to have a home. They're kind of uh, roaming people where they, uh, you know, they'll roam around with their zombie skins on and, uh, you know, kind of blend in. They don't really look to set up a location and defend it like uh, all of our connecting communities do in The Walking Dead. So uh, with Carl, we, we see him meet uh, the lead, um, what's, her, what's her name, uh, Alpha. Well, we don't know her actual name, but L Lydia's mother, basically. Um, so, you know, interested to see what happens with that. Can't wait to see, you know, the Carl stuff unfold. But it seems like so far they're, they're being pretty nice to him, so it doesn't look like there's going to be a problem. But we'll have to see what happens if Meg and the others go after him. Will it start some kind of war? Will there be something that happens? We'll have to see. But so far, nothing yet. Um, so the main concentration of the issue, you had that, and you had, of course, 
uh, you know, seeing Michonne come back. And you get to see, you know, Rick basically talk with her. And she finally kind of opens up to Rick in this issue, and she's never done that in the entire series up until now, which is pretty crazy to think after all the time they spent together, years and years, and uh, time skip and, and everything. She finally tells him what's going on with her, why she's so closed off, and why she does the things she does. So she was with Ezekiel. They were happy. She was considering, you know, starting a, a, another family. And I will say another because she had the, she tells Rick about the one she had prior and kind of a new life, you know, a new life, new husband, probably a new family, you know, new new community and totally new life. And she just it was too much for her. She couldn't she couldn't handle it. She felt like she didn't deserve to be happy, you know, um, and so she runs away without telling anybody, leaving her stuff behind, even her trusted sword she leaves, which was very out of character for her, very strange, and kind of goes off into, uh, by, on her own, and, and Rick seems to be a little little angry at her because people could have died when they were looking for her, searching for her, uh, even though nobody did, still he's a little upset that she, she didn't handle the situation a little bit better. So, right. So my thoughts on Michonne at this point and uh, and her doing that. Um, you know, she's a character in the series that is an unlikely survivor, I want to say. When she was first introduced way back when, um, I didn't think that she would be a survivor to be around, you know, this many chapters later, like 100, 100 issues later. Um, you know, and that's one of the best things about The Walking Dead is if you try to predict going forward without knowing prior, who's going to survive, who's going to live, you know, what's going to happen, what kind of story it's going to be. Uh, in a lot of ways, you'll be you'll be wrong. A lot of characters you think would survive don't. A lot of characters that uh, that uh, you know uh, you don't think are going to survive do. So she's one for me that I mean I, I know she's a really strong survivor and I and I thought she could do well, but I w- I am surprised to see she's still alive all the way to this point. And at this time, so so she feels like to me th- this is kind of the sense that that I get from the uh, the concept of the character and how the character's feeling is that uh, some people are uncomfortable with the feeling of being happy and allowing themselves to be happy. She asks Rick if he thinks he deserves to be happy and he replies yes especially after all they've been through and she goes the opposite way she says after all we've been through i don't feel like i deserve to be happy when all these other people were were killed and didn't get a chance and her kids of course were with her her husband who she's positive she doesn't know exactly what happened to them but she's pretty much positive at this point that they all are dead because her she sees her husband as not uh, ex-husband as as not being uh, strong, you know, it's not being a strong survivor, so he wouldn't have been able to make it. She knows that, even though she doesn't have actual uh, confirmation of it, she doesn't know for sure, but she she pretty much understands that they're dead. Um, so, I think that, and, and you see this with with human beings in the real world too, is that we're, we're such creatures of habit. After a certain amount of time, you know, if you have someone who lives a certain way for years and years and years, it it just conditions them to the point where. They feel like that's how they're supposed to feel. You know, that's how they're supposed to be. And they don't allow themselves to be happy. They don't allow themselves to do something like that if they if they start doing well or, or things are working out for them. They don't necessarily allow it. They kind of become addicted to pain in a way. You know, pain can be addictive and it, it can be familiar. You know, when, when you when you feel pain for a long time or when you feel hurt or, or just sadness for a long time, it can become normalized for a person and it can become comfortable you know, in being unhappy and being sad. And then for a person like Michonne, who when she gets a chance to to actually be happy and uh, and to do all these things, it freaks her out because it's so, uh, you know, uncomfortable. It's so different from what she's used to that she ends up actually running away. Uh, and I, I that's my breakdown of, of where I see the comic book version of Michonne at right now. And eventually the TV series version too. If you look at, you know, this recent episode when, when she, she does that to Rick, you know, uh, some of the decisions she makes, some of the things she does here and there, you know, uh, really, really just uh, against the grain, against what you would think she would do in a lot of ways or, or the average person would do. And this is kind of a similar type of situation where she's just really closed off and she doesn't want to open up. And she uh, I'm surprised she even told Rick about that um, because really seems to me like she has grown fond of this uh, this type of life that is full of pain and, and, and all these things. And she doesn't want to allow herself to experience the other side, which is the happiness side. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, Michonne, one of my favorite females throughout the series. I don't think she is my favorite, but yeah, she's, she's one of them. She's one of my favorites. So she's definitely tough as nails, that's for sure. Um, you know, and hearing a little bit about, uh, you know, what her life is like as a fisherman. They just work all the time, no time to think, that kind of thing. Some people do like that as well, too. So, um, yeah, so in terms of score for this issue, uh, from the edge of the world, I'm going to give it um, an 8 out of 10. It is a decent issue of The Walking Dead. Um, I like that they're releasing it, you know, biweekly. 
it's mostly character death, character, you know, uh, giving us an idea of where, where, you know, what's been happening to Michonne, Ezekiel, and all them. And I do feel for Ezekiel, too, not being able to understand why she does the things that she does. So, yeah, cool. So, anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys thought about the issue. It was a decent issue, good care dev, and good, uh, good explanation. Uh, giving us a little bit more on the character of Michonne as right now syncing up with the TV series. It's a great week to give us that. So that's pretty cool when you think about TV series is there and the comic book series, you know, the future of where the character is at all the way until then. Still struggling, still not comfortable with being happy. Um, yeah, quite different from the, the TV series version where you have Rick who doesn't seem to want to uh, allow himself to you know, kind of kind of to settle in and be happy with what he's got there in the community. You have Michonne, with, you know, kind of in the opposite position in the TV series. So, I, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the character Michonne, what you think about uh, what, what Kirkman did with her in the comic book series, where she's at right now in the comic book series, and what she did to Ezekiel, and, uh, yeah, just what you thought about the issue. Anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on it, and I hope you guys liked the review. If you did, please thumb it up below. If you want to help support the channel, please share it. Please favorite it. thought it was decent. Um, you know, not the best issue ever, that's for sure, but decent care dev and uh, i'll see you guys uh, for of course the finale of the walking dead season five very excited got to, uh, should have another video for you guys coming yeah i'll have a couple this weekend then of course the reviews and predictions and everything like that as per normal if you have any other walking dead comic series uh, topics send them to me guys and i'll call it here for this one see you guys for the next one if you're new you want to subscribe click at the bottom left to subscribe as always it's trev same piece